Hi there, in this video we will see circuit structures and signal output of the different signal encoders that are described on the lab sheet 1. Here are the basic component needed for the experiments. Here are some resistors, the integrated circuits needed, and the decoupling cap, and some wires. For the lab instruments used we will be using Rigol DS oscilloscope series and the Rigol DG function generator series, and the Unity UT181A2 for general troubleshooting. The power supply is an old HP Hewitt unit. Before working in anything make sure to have an ESD protection as some of these integrated circuits are ESD sensitive. Here we can see the voltage input that it's going to be used to power our circuits. We can see a very stable and accurate power supply, which is a good starting point. Now for some theory. The following figure show the encoded signals using A. Unipolar NRZ B. Bipolar NRZ C. Unipolar RZ D. Bipolar RZ E. Manchester The unipolar encoding produced a signal with either plus V or zero V whereas bipolar encoding produced a signal with either positive V or negative V. In NRZ encoding, there is no transition during the middle of each bit period. Whereas, in the RZ encoding, there is transition during the middle of each bit period. Both Manchester and AMI encoding have transition during the middle of each bit period, which can be seen in the figure. Okay, this is the first method using unipolar non-return to zero encoding method. When the input data bit is 1, the width and the gap between bits of unit and RZ are equal to each other. When the data bit is 0, then the pulse is represented as 0V. The result of the data signal and the NRZ encoder signal are similar and are shown in the oscilloscope. Therefore, we only need to add a buffer in front of the circuit. We can see that the input to the output signal is same. We have here power, this is the input, and that is the output, and this is our 10k resistor to ground, and that is all to it. Let me apply here a 5 kHz square wave to the input. The blue probe is the input signal, and the yellow is the output signal. By comparing the data streams of unit NRZ and BIP NRZ, the only difference is the signal amplitude is a negative voltage level when the data bit is zero. Therefore, we may utilize a comparator to encode the data bit in the circuit. As can be seen that the signal here goes below zero, and when it's positive it remains a positive, same here, all as it was shown in the expected output. When the input data bit is one or zero, the encoded signal will be a positive or a negative voltage respectively. The circuit was constructed beforehand. The amplifier is not used here. That is the power and the end gate. Here is the input signal. And this one is the output. Data and the clock are at 5 kHz, as you can see. The signal here is really looking bad. We can fix this basically by adding a decoupling cap. As you can see now we can see much cleaner signal. I suggest adding a cap at the signal output just to get a much better looking and cleaner signal. Here you can see without the cap and with the cap. When the input data bit is 1, the encoded signal at the first half of a bit time is at plus V level and the rest of the bit time is represented as 0 V. When the input data bit is 0, the encoded signal amplitude is 0 V. The bit time of RZ is half of the bit time of NRZ. Therefore, the required bandwidth of RZ is one time more than NRZ. However, RZ has two phase variations in a bit time, which is easy for receiver synchronization. As you can see, the signal is as shown in the expected output. I have added here a bunch of caps at each input and output of a signal to make sure we are getting a smooth signal Ignore this IC, it is not used here, this is the end gate output going to the non-inverting input of the amplifier. Okay this is the 5 volt line, 
and this is the negative 5 volt line goes to pin 4 of the amplifiers. This is the output. And here is the input that shows the output of the AND gate. When the input data bit is 1, the encoded signal amplitude at the first half of a bit time is plus V level, and the other half bit time is negative V level. When the input data bit is 0, the encoded signal amplitude is represented as negative V level. Let's turn the signal out on. By comparing the encoded signal of RZ and BIP RZ, we need a converter to convert the encoding signal from unipolar to bipolar. Therefore, we utilize a comparator to design the converter, which can convert the UNU RZ signal to BIP RZ signal. We will compare the signals as shown here, as you can see. The signals are the same, however. The output from the amplifier is taking the zero part of the signal further down to negative value, as shown here. When the input data bit is 1, the signal amplitude at first half of a bit time is plus V level, and the other half bit time is negative V level. When the input data bit is 0, the signal amplitude at first half of a bit time is negative V level, and the other half bit time is plus V level. This type of encoded signal has the advantage of memory. Therefore, it requires a larger bandwidth than the other encoded signals. So, it is suitable for networks such as Ethernet. By comparing the data signal, clock signal and data after encoding, we need to XNOR the data signal and clock signal to produce the Manchester signal. As shown here. That is all for this lab. I hope it helped you out. Peace.